Okay, YouTubers, uh, Shoe Fist Productions back again. Part two of the Hainel uh, pre war air rifle, 1928. Um, what we've done, we've stripped it all down, uh, took it to bits. Uh, you probably, if, if hopefully you saw the first video, um, we stripped it all down. Uh, we, it's one or two issues we've got to sort out, but basically, what we've done, uh, we give it a clean with paraffin to get all the grease and what have you off. And what we're going to do next is stick it in this, um, it's called an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, a lot of people might have seen these little ones where you can put jewellery and, and glasses in. And uh, we did a little test on the trigger, uh, just in this little one, and we are quite impressed how it came out. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this big one. Um, these are about 120, 150 quid. I used to use it in a business I used to run. Um, so we're going to use this ultrasonic cleaner. I say if you haven't got a big one, uh, you could use a little one and like turn the bits around if they stick out, do it one way and then the other and so on. So anyway, just thought we'd show you that if, you, uh, if you're impressed with the ultrasonic cleaner and what give and go yourself. Uh, right, okay, so what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to pop the bits in. And basically this has, it's got a heater, which I'm not going to use, I just put hot water in it to start with. And it's got a timer basically, so it's a bit trial and error to see how long the parts need. Uh, these things do have a, a basket that drop in for little bits so you can lift them out. The problem with that is uh, some of these are little tiny screws and there's a drain all in this which you could lose your screws in as well so we'll make sure we get them out before we drain it. Um, probably use a magnet to, to pick them up. Um, problem with the basket is that's not as effective if you put bits in the basket they're better off sitting straight in the unit. So. Uh, so we've got all the bits and anything that doesn't fit like the barrel we can put that in at an angle and then turn it around and do it the other way so we're going to fill this up as much as we can uh, got a lot of grime off with the paraffin uh, the trouble is now it stinks so uh, we've got to give it give it a good clean up and uh, there's one other bit that's the spring um, quite impressed with the quality of that uh, how it came up you can see that's even all more shiny in places so pleased with the condition basically everything but there is just one issue which I will show you before we put the cleaner on and this if you saw the last video we got the piston there and you can see it's quite that's cleaned up quite well uh, we, we couldn't work out why there wasn't a washer on it um, anyway once we cleaned it a bit uh, I could see that there's actually a little thread on the end of this and there's voice marks on, on the side so someone obviously I tried to get it out and broke it, so what we're going to have to do is uh, flatten that off, uh, drill it out and try and extract uh, the stud that's left in there. If that fails, uh, we will basically have to drill it and re-tap it. Um, so we'll hopefully be doing a video on that process. Other than that, there's not really much that needs repairing on the gun. So we're um, really pleased with the condition of everything else. and. Um, so what we'll do, we'll chuck that all in there. It's the trigger which we done, we done a little go in the little glasses cleaner. I'll show you again. Quite impressed. I mean, obviously this deep rust ain't going to come off, and we're probably not even going to attempt to get it off as part of the patina of the gun. And, uh, we just want to basically grease and grime free, not not like a new rifle. So uh, we'll chuck all the bits in. So it's trial and error for how long it need. What I'll probably do is do it 10 minutes at a time. Have a check on the bits. And uh, we'll just get this machine going. That makes sort of like a high pitched noise. It works by using high frequency. And it basically sort of bashes the, 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 the grime and the muck off things. Um, works great on plastic parts, uh, which is what I used to use it for. And uh, it's got a lid, but again, just basically to stop a bit of the noise. So what I'll do, I'll just turn it on at the mains. And this is the heater side, uh, and this is the timer side. It's on five minutes, I'll probably do it wrong way. I'll probably just put that on eight minutes to start with. Um, this has got like a cooling fan in it and stuff, and I don't, came from China, I don't want to leave it running and risk it um, going wrong. Nothing wrong with Chinese gear, but you know what I'm saying. So, um, so you don't need the lid, that's just what makes a really high pitched noise and some people don't like it. So the parts are in, like I say, once this bit has done that end, we can turn it around, put it in the other way, and uh, hopefully get it clean. The barrel, inside the barrel, we're gonna have to get a, a barrel cleaning uh, brush to sort that out, but hopefully this will just get rid uh, of most of the marks. So once you set your time, 
brush it on and uh, if you're looking at it, you can see all these little bubbles rising up. So the uh, ultrasonic cleaner is coming in. Just had a little break and uh, the water in there is pretty muggy. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to change the water. I just want to get all the sort of paraffin smell off it. Get that out of the way. We'll give us another few girls, and then when we start to reassemble the rifle, we'll, we'll show you guys. Um, not cleaned up, and whether whether we had to actually do anything else. Let's so just pull another bit out and uh, see there. That's looking. That's coming on. Um, yeah, it's looking good. So uh, just one other thing I want to show you before we go. The next bit. This is the, uh, the butt of the rifle, you probably saw that in the last video where we, we said we had trouble getting this off. The reason being is those screws in the bottom there were, uh, being, didn't want to move at all and we didn't want to damage them. And there's a metal rod runs through an angle and you need a box spanner uh, to get it off. Uh, so what we're going to do rather than go to all that trouble, I'll probably just hold that in the cleaner. Uh, like so, I might have to stand here for five minutes or I might be able to I might actually be able to prop it up somehow, uh, just give that a good old buzz in there, get all the, the paraffin and what have you off. And um, let's say we gave it a little rub with a bit of steel wool and stuff. And uh, yeah, we don't want it to look like new, we want it to still look like a 1928 rifle. So uh, we're going to give these bits uh, another buzz and uh, we'll see uh, at the next stage uh, where we are with this rifle. Okay, we've got the bits out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Um, what we've done, we dried them out. Gave him a quick spray with uh, WD-40, uh, just to stop all the, you can see it's all dripping out there, uh, just to stop all the, um, getting any more surface rust on it. So that's just to stop it rusting up, because water and steel equals rust. So uh, quite, quite nice how they've come out. So it's not, the, the cleaner's not going to get the rust off, it's just basically getting all the grime and dirt off. This piston, that's, that's cleaned up nice and well. Um, so we're going to do the engineering job on that, drilling that out, we'll, we'll do the video on that. Um, so basically that's uh, all the parts in there looking pretty clean, they're all just having a little soak, stop them rusting. So uh, we'll just leave them there for now and I'll show you the next step what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got the stock, which as we explained we're not going to take that right off, uh, but if you did want to you'd have to get the screws undone. You'd need a box spanner to drop down and there's a nut you undo and that will slide off. Um, we don't really think that's necessary to do that, so we just want to get the gun up and running and looking respectable. Um, once we put it all back together, we're going to coat all the external metal parts with um, linseed oil. We sort of rub it on and brush it off, it leaves a little thin film over it to protect it. And then you could just re-oil it every now and again to, to keep it nice. So what I'm going to show you on this is... Uh, you can see the, how dirty the, the wood is on there. So the first thing we're going to do is get some methylated spirits. It's this horrible purple stuff. Now this is dangerous, it's highly inflammable and it does give off um, quite a bit of ferns. So um, be careful with it. Put the lid back on when uh, when you've had a splash of it. So get yourself a little bit of cotton rag. This is an old bit of towel I've cut up. And the first thing we're going to do is just give that Put it on quite liberally, so it evaporates quick, so don't worry about um, about all that. I'll just put the lid back on the bottle before I knock it over. Okay, so give this uh, a good clean. I've probably done. I've done the other side just to get it prepared. You don't want to sit here watching me on camera do this for too long. So basically, give it a good old clean with the. You can see all the all the dirt coming off. And I've done this for about ten minutes. Just kept rubbing it, putting some more um, methylated spirits on it, and. Uh, just made sure all the dirt and grime was off. So, uh, also methylated spirits will cut through um, shellac, which is basically French polish. A lot of the old finishes had shellac in it, and uh, methylated spirits is the only thing that will actually cut through it. And um, that's what they test antique furniture to, to see if it's got French polish or to check for genuine French polish. Okay, so give that a good clean. So I've already done the other side. This is my Blue Peter. This is one I done earlier. So. Uh, now if you can tell the difference between that side and that side. Now this hasn't just been cleaned, what I've done after is uh, got some fine steel wool. Um, I've got a big bag of this, you can actually rip it off or cut, it actually cuts easy with scissors. And uh, what you want to do, I'll show you on the dirty side. Um, 
do it dry. Don't use rough steel wool or you will scratch your wood. Uh, you could use a very fine sandpaper, but with steel wool, that's nice because that follows all the contours and you, you can't really do much damage with it. Now as I'm rubbing that, I don't know if you can see, you'll see lots of dust falling off. And this does get clogged up. Um, so every now and again, just give it a pull. If you can see on the table there, all the dust falling out. And um, so, keep giving it a good going over with your wire wall. Every now and again, get some of your meths, give it a rub over, get any dirt off, let it dry. So that dries really quick, it just evaporates. Um, and then keep going over it with your wire wall. And then eventually you'll end up with something looking like this. And um, when I'm ready to finish it, I'll show you what we're going to do. Again, we're going to use boiled linseed oil. Um, I'll show you. That's this stuff. Um, I think that's about 8.99 or 10. You can get it cheaper. Um, I was in a hurry to get it. So anyway, nothing's too expensive. So as you can see, the difference there. That's your dirt. That's all nice and cleaned. And we don't want this skin looking like new because it's not a new gun, and that's boiler. So we want to keep some of the patina and. Um, when well, I'm ready to finish it, I'll start the camera rolling again and um, we'll see how it looks uh, once the oil goes on. Also it might be handy to have a little dust buster. Just get the dust up now and again. And also what I've done, I, uh, I wrapped a rag around this bit just to stop any dust. Um, just loosely wrapped it just to stop any dust getting in the gubbins there. So I'm now going to finish this with a wire wall. And I'll start the camera again when uh, when it's ready to put the finishing coat on. So uh, we'll see you very soon. Okay, all right, we've got both sides are clean. So as you can see, that's a lot lighter now. Um, I haven't gone too crazy on it. Uh, we just want it nice and clean, nice to want to feel nice as well. So uh, that's all the wire woolen done. And uh, what we're going to do now? We're going to get the boiled linseed oil. There's two types of linseed oil: boiled and unboiled. Get the boiled one. Don't ask me the difference. One's been boiled, obviously, and the other isn't. Uh, sort of stuff. I use this stuff on quicker bats, and now it's a good, uh, really good wood preserver. And it's fairly cheap. Kitty proof lid, that's why I had trouble. Right, you want quite liberal amounts of this, so give your rag a, a bit of a soak. Nice clean rag, just liberally rub it on. So you ain't got to worry about getting on the metal parts because that will actually help protect it and we are gonna we are gonna give it a, a rub over on all the, the bare metal parts after once the gun is all back together just to um, stop it rusting away you get a, 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 a film of protection. So now several ways of doing this, those of you who've done wood finishing will know with oil you can build it up in layers so you could now Obviously, you're probably better off propping up somehow. So you can do it all at once, we can just do one side at a time. Um, you can then just let that dry like such and uh, give it a light buff, come back, put another coup on, and you can, you can build the oil up in layers. But we're not going to go too mad on this because that's a rifle stock and not a dining table. So uh, we're just going to give the oil a good rub in. A little bit more. That is actually soaking it up quite nice, it's quite dry this wood, so uh, that'll help nourish it and protect it. Then what we'll do, when that's dried off a bit, we'll get a clean cloth and we'll just give it a polish. So I'm just showing you right quickly, um, I'm not going to spend all day making a video on how to polish a rifle stock. So, you can basically get that as shiny or as matte as you like. So if you want to build it up in layers, you just do this, put another coat on, and keep repeating the process, and you'll build up a nice layer of protective oil. And um, oil and seed oil uh, are safe. If you get it on your hands and stuff, it won't really matter. Um, I say they've used it on cricket bats for years, and that's a good finish. So, uh, and you can rub it on the metal parts of your gun. So that's the. That's the basic, I mean, I don't know if you can tell too well on the camera there. So it's not going to look like them, we don't want it to, so we just want it looking respectable. And uh, so I'm going to carry on putting a few more coats on that. I'll let it dry in between coats, give it a polish, and uh, we'll see you on the next stage, which will be um, probably going to get that piston sorted out. 
I say we're going to do a video drilling that out. Hopefully, if we can't drill it out, we're going to have to um, we're going to use a stud extractor. If that doesn't work, we'll drill it out and recut the thread out. If that doesn't work, if all else fails, we'll probably end up having to glue something on. But I'm pretty confident that's, that's a pretty straightforward job getting the screw out. Well, not straightforward, but I've done worse. So uh, we'll see you on the next stage, which will be hopefully sorting that piston out. And once that's done, this is going to be going back together pretty quick. We'll give it an oil up and uh, we'll give it a test shoot. Can't wait. Okay, something I, uh, I forgot to mention concerning oily rags. This is any oil, not, not, not just linseed oil. Same with the methylated spirits and all the rest. Um, oily rags can spontaneously combust, which basically means if you if you chuck this in a bin or put it in an enclosed space, um, that could spontaneously ignite. So when you're done with your oily rags, don't chuck them in your bin. You need to lay them out flat, out in the garden, obviously somewhere. Let all the oil evaporate and dry out, and then you can safely dispose of them. Um, but just be aware that oily rags, don't chuck them straight in your wheelie bin or whatever because you could end up with a, with a fire. So I thought I'd just mention that for you.